Okay, so is the United States a hamster wheel? Pretty much everywhere could be a hamster wheel if you're in the wrong, uh, if you're in the wrong situation. Whether you're in a really low cost of living country or you're in a, or you're in the United States, at the end of the day, it's really all about purchasing power. If you're making like thirty thousand dollars a year in Thailand, you might be doing pretty well because the money goes a lot further there. The exchange rate's good. The Thai bot, I think is what it's called. You get a lot of that local currency for your dollars. So uh, 30,000, 20,000, 30,000, dollars, US dollars in a, in a low cost of living country, you could actually live pretty well. Um, but if you, if you translate that income to the United States, you're in poverty, right? Because things cost so much more here uh, as a percentage of your income you're going to be spending so much of your income just on basic living expenses if you go to like thailand or uh, potentially south america somewhere uh, or somewhere in uh, in asia uh, your cost of living could be very very low in terms of your income so even if you're not making a ton of money the food the rent or the housing expense is is not very high comparatively um so but the the locals there probably aren't doing much better right because the locals who live there if they don't make a lot of income they're still going to have the same problem where a lot of their money even though they're not making a ton of money a lot of that money is going towards rent and housing and basic necessities so it can be the same in the United States. Someone making $100,000 in the United States could essentially be in the same situation as someone making $10,000 a year in like Thailand, right? It's it's relatively the same. Even though people look at you in the United States to say, oh man, you're making so much money. A lot of that money in the United States that you make is, you know, it has to be allocated towards the stuff that you just have to pay for. There's no way around it. You know, you got taxes, insurance, you got rent, you got fuel, transportation, basic clothing, uh, sustenance, food, you got to eat, right? So I think if you're able to save around half of whatever you uh, earn, so if you make like $100,000 a year after tax and everything, if you can if you can net out like forty or $50,000 uh, and put that into investments or savings, that's pretty good. A lot of people probably can't do that though, because again, if you're, if you have any kids or a family or you have a mortgage payment or a rent that's higher uh car repairs transportation insurance food i mean you could see how these things add, add up and you're just not going to have much uh left so really the idea would be to still earn a good income like if you live in the united states and maybe this is possible now because of the internet and you're just doing things with an internet connection um if you can earn a decent amount of US dollars and live in a different country, you'd have a much better situation because you still have dollars and you can drastically lower your living expenses by like 50 to 60 to 70%. And the food prices are a lot less too. Um, so that's one way where you could probably make even a lot less money. But as long as you're earning the dollar, you could live pretty well in thailand or in south america or um you know one of these countries that has a very low cost of living um, so that's that might be a good answer for people because in the united states if you're like again i'm in seattle area i it i see these things that come up for houses that are for sale and it's like two million dollars i mean just for for a house it's in a good city i guess right where there's a lot of demand where, where people want to live there, but it's a $2 million house that is, is a pretty average house. Like it's not, it's nothing fancy. You would think for that amount of money, you'd be getting like a mansion with a pool and all these nice amenities. It's not the case at all, right? So a lot of it is like where you live and my whole, you know, I've said it multiple times in other videos and I, that's why I have to move really. There's not an end game here in my current situation that is going to work out. If I continue to do what I'm doing here, I will, I will be on a hamster wheel and I'll never stop running. I'll never be able to generate enough income doing
doing what I'm doing right now to actually afford to live where I'm living. Won't happen. So you have to realize that and say, okay, I've said it in other videos, but there's three options. You can basically just accept your reality and accept that you're probably never gonna be wealthy, probably never gonna own real estate, and for whatever reason, you wanna continue living where you're living, right? The other option is to realize, okay, I have to change what I'm doing so I can make more money, right? Because it, to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to continue to live in a high cost of living area if you're not making a high income because so much of your income has to go towards your living expense. So if they're not paying you a high amount of money to live in the area that you're working in, then it doesn't make sense, right? Why would you wanna live somewhere where you can't really afford it, right? You're working a job or you're doing something in an area that they don't give you enough money to live where you're working, right? It's It doesn't make sense. So the third option is just moving, saying, okay, I don't know what type of job or situation I might have elsewhere, but this isn't gonna work. I know 100% if I continue doing what I'm doing right now, there simply isn't enough money that's coming out of this job to afford anything in this general area. It's not gonna work, right? So for whatever reason, they have they have a situation set up where they're paying you whatever they're paying you. And of course, wages never really keep up with inflation, but you can't afford to live where you are working. So you're gonna be permanently renting and then you're probably gonna be somewhat of like a paycheck to paycheck type situation. Uh, because if any unexpected expenses come up, you know, like medical or car repair, or um, you have to travel somewhere, emergency type thing, uh, it's, it could be thousands of dollars and a lot of people just don't have it. So they end up putting it on a credit card and then they get kind of deeper into a hole because you have a fixed amount of income. A lot of people are on somewhat of a fixed income. They might be able to make a little bit more money here and there depending on their work performance, but most people, unless it's like a strictly sales type job, uh, you're, you're, you're pretty much making around the same amount of money every month. So when you live in a world where the prices of everything that you need to do, whether that's renting or buying food, paying for insurance, just the basics, right? Those prices all go up and you don't control that. But your income stays relatively the same. So that means that you're just becoming you have less purchasing power. More and more of your income has to go towards the necessities. And so if you're trying to save money for like a house or you're trying to save money to, uh, you know, for your retirement or investments or whatever, uh, it's gonna become harder and harder, right? Because most of that income has to go towards just surviving. So that's the reality of the situation in the United States and probably elsewhere too, if your income is not high enough to, you know, fend off all the expenses that life throws at you. So you have to move to a lower cost of living area. You have to potentially get more skills so that you can get paid more, which that's an option as well. It's easier said than done, but you have to be able to demand a good income and you need to get skills, or you need to get trained, or you have to do something that's in, in high demand so that you can get paid well for it. If you make enough money, that is the key to everything. You can solve all your problems if you make enough money. The, the issue is most people can't make enough money to solve all of their financial problems because the financial obligations are rising faster than people can afford to pay for them, okay? And then the, th you know, the last thing I'll say is just, hey, if, if you can do something online where you can potentially make some amount of money that's decent, maybe maybe it is uh, an option to say, I'm gonna move overseas or I'm gonna relocate to somewhere where my rent's $300 a month or $400 a month and I can make two or $3,000 a month. You know, from a pure purchasing power standpoint, you're, you might be doing pretty good there. Your quality of life's higher your expenses are low, you have freedom over your time, and um, you know, you're not tied to your paycheck to paycheck type existence in uh, the United States. So let me know what you guys think. I'm, you know, I'm considering it, I don't know. If you can actually make money online and not have to, um, 
be in the United States, but earn some amount of money, it's, it's an option, right? Your money just goes so much farther. If you've saved up some amount of dollars, your money goes a lot farther in these other countries. So let me know what you think. Subscribe. See you on the next one.